Hey everyone, it's me, Tim, and it's time for another gear review. Today I'm going to be talking about the backcountry panniers from Moscow Moto. Now, I've been testing these things out for about four months now. I wanted to make sure I really had a good amount of time with them before I talked about my opinion and gave a full-blown review on them. Part of the reason for that is I'm switching from hard cases to soft panniers. There's a few things that kind of threw me off with that, and I wanted to make sure my opinion of these bags was fair and not biased. Uh, so we're going to jump into it. Like I said, I have a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to get into it right after this. So like I said, today we're going to be talking about the backcountry panniers from Moscow Moto. Now in the spirit of full disclosure, as some of you may know, Moscow Moto is a sponsor of this channel. They have been for a while. I absolutely love their products and I fully stand by their company and all of their gear. Now there's going to be a honest review and fully in-depth talking about all the different features and stats of these panniers. There are quite a few things to go over. Before we jump into my opinion, let's go over some of the features and stats. So this is version 2.0 of their backcountry panniers. There are 35 liters. They also come in a 25 liter or an offset if you have a bike like mine where your exhaust is a little bit bigger on one side. Now I went with 235s because the offset part didn't really bother me too much. These panniers are designed for adventure touring, hardcore, enduro style riding, things like backcountry discovery routes, off-road riding, but I'll tell you I've been doing a ton of pavement riding with these panniers and I absolutely love them even for that. I just got back from two months in Mexico, a lot of that was pavement and these things were just really great for that trip. They mount onto your bike with a quick mount wedge system that makes it really easy to take them on and off. So you can either use them to sit on them around the campfire or I'll, you know, take them with me into a hotel room. Uh, it's just really easy to take these things on and off, carry them around with you and use them for other things too. Now they're coming in at $850. There's a few options that can increase that price. For this one, my setup comes with two pockets. It's also available with either no pockets or four pockets. And the pockets are these things right here. These panniers feature a two bag system. There's a dry bag inside and a tough ballistic bag outside. I'm gonna say I can totally vouch for that. I have dropped this bike on both sides of these panniers going pretty fast off road and there's no issues with them whatsoever. As a matter of fact, not that we're into the opinion part of this video yet, uh, but something I didn't like about hard cases is that as soon as you drop them, if you happen to dent them, you can hammer them out, but they might not be as waterproof as they were originally. Something great with these is that even when you drop them, uh, that really rugged outer shell is gonna keep them protected and that wet bag, the dry bag inside is gonna keep everything from getting wet. Uh, I have found that they are 100% waterproof so far under all the conditions I've been in. I'm talking like monsoon rain. It also has this beaver tail stash spot. I am using this thing like every day. Uh, one thing I always keep in there is my bike cover. I just kind of stuff it down in the beaver tail. Uh, sometimes I'll throw my flip flops in there. Uh, if I stop at a store or get a bottle of water or something, I just slip it down inside the beaver tail. Uh, that thing comes in so handy for so many reasons. There are moly expandability options on both sides and even on the bottom. There are literally so many things you can strap to these. Comes with six external compression straps. And something new on version 2.0 is the aluminum molded G hooks. So like I said, my setup is giving me a 70 liter total capacity, 30 liters in the main compartment plus the five liter pocket. It's about 20 inches top to bottom, but it can be expanded quite drastically. Uh, with the roll top you can really stuff some extra stuff in there and just leave it a little over expanded and, and still get a few rolls out of it to keep it waterproof the pannier itself is 15 inches that is the main body but 18 inches if you include the rear pocket and it's about eight inches thick and these panniers weigh about 10 pounds each including hardware but not including the auxiliary pockets some things about the construction materials the outer shell is a ballistic nylon and hypalon and the inner bags are a pvc with welded seams the side buckles, like I said, are custom molded aluminum. So those are all of the stats on these panniers. Now I do want to talk about some of the features and some of the things I really like about this setup and go over a little bit of my opinion after that. So some of the features that I have really grown to love about this pannier setup is the infinite expandability. It seems that as weather changes and situations change, I'm constantly, you know, taking a jacket off, an extra layer, stuffing it in the bag. Um, taking something out of this bag and getting rid of it or adding food, adding water, supplies, things like that. Uh, 
my gear setup is constantly evolving throughout the day even. And it's so nice that I never run out of places to stuff things, jam things in. Um, it's just endless. Uh, being able to strap things to the top. Sometimes I'll strap my tripod or a chair to the top. Um, being able to strap things underneath the pockets are just immensely valuable to me. I'm constantly, you know, changing things around. So having that option is really great for me. And I think a lot of other people would find that very useful as you're traveling around on a motorcycle. Uh, something else I really like and noticed almost immediately. Now this is more a difference between hard bags and soft bags. So it's not specific to this gear setup. Um, but as far as soft luggage, I found my bike handles so much better and not just off road because they are a little bit lighter, but they are so much more aerodynamic than my hard boxes were. I used to get so much drag on the bike. Any amount of crosswind would just blast me, like barely be able to keep the bike on the road. I don't get any of that anymore. Cutting through the twisties, I don't even feel any luggage back there. Uh, it's just it's such an improvement in terms of how the bike handles so i'm absolutely thrilled about that one thing i'm not crazy about and i kind of hope that moscow maybe figures something out in this regard is the security aspect now i know that with hard cases it's just an illusion of safety if somebody really wanted to they could have jammed a screwdriver in my locks and opened them up but it at least deters people enough that i have time to run into a store uh, maybe go you know food shopping or something, or maybe take a short hike. Uh, with these, I'm not so comfortable walking away for such an extended period of time. Now, most people that don't know anything about these bags would walk up to them and maybe not know instantly how to even open them. And Moscow does have that locking bar where you could wrap a cable through a retracting cable and lock everything in. It's just kind of, it's you just kind of fumble with the locks and it's, it's not really a perfect setup. What I would like to see is some kind of built-in latching system that's built into the back side of the mount that kind of hooks over that locking bar and locks it into place, something hard that, um, you know, is at least the same level of security as hard bags because nobody's cutting through these bags and getting what's inside. It's just a matter of keeping it locked to the bike and locked closed. Uh, so something like that, I think, would be a huge improvement for version 3.0. Um, Security has been really my one major flaw, weakness to soft luggage. Um, I do think that the handling of the bike definitely outweighs that though. Uh, something else I really like about these, especially compared to hard cases, is that I do go off-road a lot. It's a big heavy bike. I do tend to drop it once in a while. And when I've dropped it with hard cases, I notice that things get dented uh, and you can always take a hammer and kind of bang them back into place. but they're not necessarily as waterproof as they were before you dropped it. Uh, with these, like I said, I have slammed this thing into the ground. I'm not proud to say, but several times, really, really like hard. And I've not had any issues. There's a little bit of scuffs on them, uh, a little bit of battle scars, but they're still 100% waterproof, functional. And I would say about as hard as you would want to drop a bike, I have on these cases and haven't had a single issue. Something else I really love about this gear and most of Moscow's gear, um, if not all of it, is their attention to detail and the amount of thought that goes into their gear. Uh, it's just, it's the little things, you know, the things that people who are out there riding are designing and building this gear and it really shows. There's a spot on the back pocket for a two liter water pouch, which I have, and there's a little nozzle in it that you can open up while it's inside the pocket. There's a little opening in it and you can use it as a faucet when you're brushing your teeth, washing dishes, I mean, there's so many reasons why that comes in handy. Normally I'd have to be taking my camel back or some kind of water thing, hanging it from a tree, and it's a total pain. Having something like that built in, the major advantage when I'm motorcycle camping. Uh, one more downside uh, and sort of also an upside is that because of that infinite expandability, uh, I feel like I'm constantly fumbling with the straps. I'm constantly tightening and loosening things and they have a nice system to keep everything clean so your straps aren't flopping in the breeze. But I feel like because I'm doing it so frequently, uh, it just kind of feels annoying. I wish maybe there was a slightly better system than the two pieces of Velcro behind the strap. Because I feel like I have to kind of like, once I get it tight, I got to jam my fingers back there, put the two pieces of Velcro together. I wish maybe there was a way to make that strap itself Velcro so it just attaches to itself and I wouldn't have to deal with that one extra step. That's a little nitpicky, but 
it is something I'm doing pretty frequently. Sometimes I just leave some of them a little bit loose so I have some play in them. Uh, but the top one at the very least, I like to be pretty tight. Um, that's about it for things I don't like about it. Uh, there are just so many features, so many add-ons, so many things you can do with these things. Um, yeah, I think I'm totally sold on the idea of soft luggage, especially for the places I go with the amount of off-roading that I tend to do. Um, you know, the safety aspect of not risking getting my foot pinched between a hard case and the ground, uh, that's a nice peace of mind, knowing that I'm not gonna damage the cases if I drop it. Um, there's just so many reasons for someone who does the type of riding that I do to be using soft luggage. And I think Moscow really nailed the soft luggage setup. Uh, one more thing I think is a downside, uh, but I'm kind of figuring out a new plan for this, a new system, is that I do kind of miss the sticker real estate. Uh, my old cases were just absolutely covered in stickers from all the places I had been. And it was a nice memory. It was a nice conversation piece. Um, you can put patches on the beaver tail. I've seen people do that. I'm thinking I might actually take this silver panel right here and start putting stickers on that from all over the places I travel. Um, so it's a little bit of a downside, but it's not too hard to remedy that. So that's about it for these cases. Like I said, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I will leave a link to Moscow's website in the description box down below in case you guys want to check out any of their gear, uh, their tank bags, duffel bags, panniers, rackless systems, and they have riding apparel too, which I've done a review on. I do have a couple other pieces of gear I'm going to be reviewing in the near future. Their Nomad tank bag, for example, I'm absolutely loving that thing. Uh, but that is it for this video. I hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Ride safe.